right, so what actually is the screen quota? Um, it requires exhibitors to show domestic films 30% to 40% of the year with a base number of 146 days or face suspension. What's really fascinating, right, or worth noting is that, I mean, this is, this is precisely how hegemony works, right? You would think that Korean exhibitors would have an investment in Korean cinema, that they would want to show Korean films. But basically, they're only showing them because the government requires them to. So otherwise, you know, they would show American films maybe 100% of the year. And why would they do that? Because what comes before um, the investment in national cinema and national art? What might it be? It's this. American films are going to make them more money. And that extends to audiences, right? Audiences want to go to see what they have determined and what the world has determined the best films, right? Not, you know, again, you know, I, I'm sure that most Koreans or a lot of Koreans, or maybe all Koreans have, have um, you know, an, uh, uh, a sort of, uh, let's say, an engagement with, or an investment in their country, but when it comes down to it, it's like, yeah, but I want to go see an American film, you know, and, and, and that's the sort of dynamic that, that I do want to kind of point out, that, that it seems to be at odds, but in other words, like, when are the times where we act against our own, or what would seem to be in our favor? Right? And, th and that's been the entire thing about hegemony. Right? Um, let's see. With the dwindling numbers, um, theaters were not enforcing, um, and you know, like, like the screen quota, and the Ministry of Culture and Tourism was not caring. Right? So here's the, here's the other question. So Hollywood publicists like Jack Valenti, former head of the MPAA, were, were actively lobbying for abolition. And Valenti is another great example. Valenti is someone who was instrumental in uh, the middle of the 20th century in setting up um, uh, uh, the rating system precisely, and he's credited for kind of allowing filmmakers more leeway. So he's, he's, he's kind of um, uh, lionized as a, and championed as a sort of um, a figure of, 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 of like, let's say free expression. And yet, you know, in, in this context, like for Koreans, right, he's coming in as what? As a villain, right? Because he's basically saying, um, you need to get rid of the screen quota because it goes against the, the free market, because we're not allowing for meritocracy and for Koreans, um, the screen quota. No, it's because um, it's part of free trade, neoliberal free trade during this period, trade negotiations, and the way that cultural objects are used as part of negotiation of trade between two countries, right? Um, in 1998, this is on page 70, U.S. trade officials placed the quota on a list of terms to be discussed in negotiations for a South Korea-U.S. bilateral investment treaty, right? So, you know, again, you have the most powerful country in the world, you have a country that's not terribly powerful, they enter into bilateral treaty or, or talks how bilateral is it really, right? I mean, I'll, I'll kind of leave it at that. But one of the things, the terms to be negotiated for the U.S. government is the screen quota, which is to say you, like, allow us to give you, or you have to show, take more. Like, we'll take more of your exports if you take more. Um, uh, you, like, we'll take more of your semiconductors, for example. You take, you take, or cars, and you take more of our film. So in 1998, December and June of 1999, we have a, those explosive demonstrations that Paquette talks about, um, where um, you know the nation's directors and, and stars come out and they march and they have like movie posters that are set up almost like funeral posters because they're saying that if you give in to the American demands, that it'll kill the the, the Korean film industry. Um, and again, again and again, I've said, um, when's the last time you've heard of a, of a, of a, a Japanese film? You know, like it, to the to the degree of a Kitano Takeshi or a, or a Kurosawa Akira. Um, when's the last time you've heard of a Hong Kong film? To you know, the degree of of a of a of a Wong Kar Wai. When's the last time you've heard of a French film? You know, um, and, and and the list keeps going on. It's like, what are people watching? They're watching the Avengers, right? Um, uh, and then of course, like you know. Um, 
then you have the uh, I think it's um, it's Kang Jae Gyu and it's Im Guan Tech who the like two major directors who um, shave their heads in protestation and protest has a long history in South Korea because you know it was so instrumental to the country dem democratizing protest against protest mobilized by university students um, and and kind of meant to sort of incite the the the, the, the proletariat in Korea the working class. Um, and, and, and between that kind of political consciousness, sort of, you know, um, resisting um, the autocratic regimes during the period. In 2012, and I mean, after 10 years of negotiation, right, still went into effect, like, at, at the end of the day, um, which included a provision of beef and the weakening of the screen quota. The beef is... Um, Noteworthy because so there's because of there were violent protests in 2008, um, and this is noteworthy why because of mad cow disease, because mad cow was on the rise internationally, and because it had been it found in American cattle, and so think about like what's happening here. You have the U.S. and then you have Korea, <laughs> the best drawing of Korea. Um, going into trade negotiations and um, you know Korea is like hey or take our exports and the US is like only if you take more of our films but also our cows right and Korea is like hey those cows have disease and the US is like no they don't also we're stronger than you and um, of course there would be violent protest and, you know, I'm just pointing this out to say, like, if it were the reverse, if Korea, we were entering into, if, if there were trade agreements happening right now, and let's say it's Korean cattle, and there was disease in cattle, you know, um, and we were like, hey, take our cows, and, like, how would, how would like, um, like, the American people feel about it? Like, how would we feel about it, you know? Think about how, how much... Uh, importation, exportation, and immigration are hot button topics right now, right? Um, you know, like uh, uh, this kind of real sort of um, fervent um, pushback against anything that's not domestic, right? Whether it's people or goods, right? Let's be honest. And yet, why do we expect other people to take our shit, right? This is kind of what I'm trying to point out. Like, why do we have it both ways? We want other people to take our things, especially even if they're susceptible, but we don't want to take any of it. Like, what makes us so different? What makes us so special, right? Um, okay, so moving on.